I mean, this is as easy as it gets. You see right here, I mean, the second he breaks, he's got five yards of separation. I can throw that right away. And we're up the field for an easy one-play touchdown once again. But once the safety starts rotating out to the tight end, he's just got inside leverage and it's already too late. Is I could have probably threw that right away as he's already going for a one-play touchdown. But you can see he's, he's kind of, he's hesitating to drop on that short route. He eventually bails for it. When he does that, when you see him being indecisive like that, you can throw to this RB route and he's very easily going for an instant one-play touchdown. Nobody even covered him that time, which can happen from time to time as well. For the fastest, cheapest, most reliable coins on the market, check out my coin sponsor, MMOXP.com, and use discount code MONEYSHOT to get 5% off your order. Link in the description below. Welcome back, Money Team. This is Mad Money Shot. Snip of the Mad Cheese, as always. Got a full breakdown video for you guys today. Today, I'm in practice mode because I want to break down a new offense that I've been using in a lot of gameplays that I have planned for a lot more, and that is the I-Form Close. This here, to me, is one of the meta offenses to use right now. It's based off the fact that since the latest patch came out, uh, running the ball is back in a big way, and this has some of the best run plays and pass plays in the entire game. So I'm not going to waste too much time because this is going to be a long video, so I'm just going to go ahead and get right into into it but if you guys want to see more practice mode style videos like this in the future please make sure to be a subscriber hit the like button let me know in the comment section because even though i like to show this stuff off in gameplay i can't necessarily show everything that these formations can do because i can only show you based off of what my opponent runs on defense so today i'm going to start off with uh, the run plays there's four run plays in this formation and i use just about every single one of them but the best two are going to be the halfback stretch and the uh the zone week which are probably my two favorites one of the things about this formation though before i get into the run plays it really makes it unique is you can't hit the right stick until you get tight end or te split end which is an okay uh setup you can see we have a tight end now goddard at this wide receiver spot which is something that i actually have used in gameplay and it doesn't necessarily affect the pass plays the pass plays still work pretty good the same my personal uh, way to set this up though the best way in my opinion you'll see that a lot in my gameplays going forward is i like to take my best uh speed tight end which is going to be a backup by the name of what is he out of here as i'm not even seeing him did they take him out of the game oh no he's at fullback my bad uh albert's uh aqua boonham i'm gonna go ahead i'm gonna remove him so i can put him at this spot here now the reason i do this is because now i have three tight ends on the field if you guys saw the latest patch basically uh what it did was if you don't have enough linebackers and defensive linemen to match my tight ends and match my offensive linemen you're not going to get the benefit of the uh, read and react defense which is like the ai that's helped to stop the run and now that i have three tight ends in the set and five linemen that gives me a total of eight there may be only like the goal line packages and maybe like the four four split in the entire game that has eight linebackers and eight defensive linemen on the field so this is basically going to guarantee that you never have to worry about that throughout the entire game and like i said it doesn't really hurt the pass play so i'm going to run the entire video like this and I'm still going to have a lot of success. So let's go ahead and let's start with the halfback stretch on offense because this is the best run play to the outside. We're just going to go ahead. I guess we'll just go random 4-3. Now, before I get into the video, if you guys want more help, this entire scheme is from my Denver Broncos offense and also from my New York Jets offensive ebook. So if you guys want to see more schemes from those, you can download them instantly simply by clicking the links in the description or the top end comment. Now, as far as the setups, the run plays may seem kind of basic, but there's a lot of different setups that I use. Number one, I like to flip it pretty much every single time and bring this guy over who's a tight end who's going to be my like my wham block. You can see here, if I, if I hike the ball before that guy who was falling across basically gets to get set he gets stuck in the middle of the field i know that wasn't a great run play but this is something you're gonna see a lot in my gameplays you can see right here if i hike the ball here he's stuck in no man's land i, I mean i hiked a little bit late because he did get out there and kind of change the, the direction of the run play but typically i want to try to hike that while he's right here in the middle of the field that's going to give me a blocking advantage in the direction that i'm traveling so my favorite way to run this run or this uh stretch play is to flip it motion this guy across and like I said, the guy doesn't follow. It's even better because now I have a, it's his own coverage, obviously, and I have a blocking advantage. You can see we're just getting some very big run holes here. Now, I know some people might say, oh, you're using the Eagles, the offensive line, blah, 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 blah. But if you see the videos that I have coming out, the gameplay videos I have coming out, they're all Giants videos who have one of the worst offensive lines in the league. So that really doesn't matter. Running back is way more important in this game. As you can see, we can also go in this direction. Now, I find if I go in the strong direction, I typically like to motion this guy out. It can be a bit of a giveaway. So if you notice your opponent start to shift the defensive line in the direction of the motion just motion him back because keeping him in line you know motioning him out can kind of give away where he's going but you're going to notice in some of the pass plays going forward in this video that i actually motion the tight end to the left which is actually not letting me do right now based off the fact that uh, i don't know maybe it's that motion already 
But, you know, like I said, the motion of the tight end isn't necessarily the biggest giveaway as Chris Jones kind of blows that up. So, like I said, I mean, I'm not really worried too much about how well I run this play in practice mode as we get another man coverage. Like I said, I want to try to hike that immediately so it gets stuck back there. And you can see that we get a very easy run lane to the outside. And like I said, if I do it with the with the extra tight end, I'm never going to have to really worry about, um, you know, the read and react AI helping my opponents run defense out, which is really critical. So that's pretty much the biggest setups. You can also motion across the tight end here. I can flip it here and then you can see the defensive line automatically shifts, but that's not always going to happen against uh, online opponents. And you can see we still have a very good run lane. We also have, I mean, I do average the most. I average over 10 yards of carry in that play, but there's also the zone week, which is a really good inside run, which I typically only use if my opponent has some spread looks or they're running out in small defensive formations like nickel packages or dime packages, which is typically what people do. If you go against something like this, they're definitely going to, uh, you're definitely going to have an advantage. So we're going to pick that. Like I said, there's not a lot to this, but a lot of times I'll make the same motion. Just to make my opponent think I'm running it outside, you can see that we did have a guy flip with there, but I'm not really too concerned with that because I'm running inside anyway. But mostly, I'm just looking for a hole, and a lot of times I find it's best to flip the right, uh, flip this uh, run with the right stick, so that I can run to the strong side with this play. As you can see, there's definitely a lot of cutback lanes. I know I didn't get a great run there. You're just gonna have to believe the averages because obviously um, that's a good indication of these run plays that average you know close to 10 yards a carry between these two run plays now if you do have to worry about your opponent um having to read and react ai on i typically find it's best to rotate between those two plays and the two plays i'm going to show you which is the zone toss which would be your replacement for the halfback stretch and the halfback iso which is your replacement for the uh for the zone week we're just going to run this the exact same way where I'm just gonna, you know, flip the play and I'm gonna I'm gonna motion snap this guy across once again. Although I can let him get set if nobody follows. I don't have to motion snap him every single time. But one of the things about this play, it's a good run play, but I find a lot of times because you don't have that that straight up man on blocking and you have these gaps, a lot of times guys will shoot those gaps and get in. And you can see it's just it's just not the most consistent run play. The stress play is definitely better. And then last but not least, last run play before we get some of the pass plays is the halfback ISO. This particular play, as I keep accidentally hitting that, is once again only going to be good if you're running uh, with huge gaps right up the middle there. But I find this entire formation run blocks really well for inside runs and outside runs. Because like I said, the stretch runs a very good run as well. So when it comes to the pass plays, you have one play that's all the one play touchdowns and that's a PA tight end leak. So I'm going to save that for last because there's a lot of really good dink and dunk plays in here that really get open against just about any defense in the game. I'm going to start off with one that's really just coverage specific though and that's the PA deep read. So we're going to go in and pick that. This play here is specific to man coverage. So we're just going to go ahead. We're going to pick a uh, random man if I can do that. We're going to pick random man coverage. Yeah. So this play right here, you're pretty much only going to get the comeback route from these plays. And that's going to be great because if you throw that with timing, you can really just throw that in your, in your receiver's hip pocket. That wasn't great timing right there. But he's going to stop short every single time. Both receivers, really. As you can see, this guy here is going to do the same thing. Although if you throw it a little bit early, that can be a problem. So I really want to try to throw it. I mean, typically, I'm going to, since I have my tight end on that side, I'm kind of going to ignore him unless I have to throw to him. I really just want to work that X route because that's my one receiver. And you can see how he just stops and he's going to come open underneath every single time. And your opponent will basically have to, um, you know, shade underneath as we're getting like a, a kind of a weird... Uh, three deep here. That's going to be a little bit different, I guess. As you can see, he actually did come down, but I still got open, which is surprising. I wonder if you know if he's going to if he would have did that more than one time because this is actually an option route where this guy will uh, go up the field if he has the the look. But you can see I don't get that very often. I don't know what's required for this option route to uh, to try to take off up the field. As he's pretty much just come back every single time. So very consistent route. Like I said, working at any man coverage, that's something you can use every single time. You can see the route's being run about 20 yards. So it really doesn't matter what the down and distance is. And if for whatever reason you have a zone, you could always hit the running back as well. So that's one really hard to stop route, but it's only for man coverage. So let's go ahead and let's show a very hard to stop route that beats every single defense in the game. And that is the iPhone close PA deep cross go. Let's go and let's pick that. I'm going to go and pick random this time. We're just going to go random nickel. We have uh, two options already in the running back and the uh, the B route, the uh, crossing tight end. I'm going to add a third one right over the middle with the A route on a five yard in route. Now I can go with a drag if I want to, but I find that if I do that, the running back and the tight end are both kind of close together, but that's fine because this route is really, or this play really is really all about this route. As you can see, it's open at about a 20 yard depth, which is really good. But if I want it to be deeper and if I have more time, I can smart route that. And now you can see it's at a like a 30-yard depth, 
And if I really want to, I could also do the same thing with the tight end and put him at a 10 yard depth with smart routes. So I have a lot of options here as the running back. Really, I wanted to throw to him, but he actually got stuck getting out from the lineman. So that's something that uh, these other two routes that I'm creating here can get open against any man or zone, but the running back really only gets open against zone. So you have to be mindful of that as we have what looks like a zone coverage here. And like I said, you got to worry about your, your pass accuracy as I was wide open. I smart routed that and he was wide open, but I get a poor pass accuracy. So we'll leave that at the regular 20 yard depth for now, although we can do that whenever we want to. And you can see right here, we're, this guy, he's going to get open against any coverage, any man or zone. I find that putting him on a smart route is a good move as I actually, um, I can smart route the B route and I can smart route the tight end. Although this here looks like it might be a man zero blitz. So we're gonna block, we're gonna check and release that running back just in case it is. And you can see that it is a man zero blitz, but that's fine because like I said, this guy here, how did not catch that? It said out of reach, but it looked like he was wide open. So either way, you can see, doesn't matter the coverage, doesn't matter, um, you know, what, what type of blitz they're sending. I could just I could just throw this all game long and it's just a cheat code. But it's not the only setup. There's actually another setup you can do with this play. Now there is another setup for this play, but I'm gonna go ahead, I'm gonna switch out for an actual receiver before I do it. So let's go and let's pick the PA deep cross go one more time. And we're gonna continue with random on defense, random big nickel over G. Now this play here, you could also run from a hash mark to the open side of the field and motion this guy across, then put him on a smart route. And now he's going to go open against just about anything, man or zone. doesn't matter. This here looks like a cover two, but because of the depth of where he's running this, you're going to be able to dot that up all game. And it's over 30 yards, so no zone drop depth is really going to pick that up. And since I do this setup a lot when it comes to uh, some of the, um, you know, I, I motion this guy a lot when it comes to uh, some of the other pass plays, it's really not going to, your opponent's not going to be able to pick up that you're running this play, especially since I was doing it with the stretch runs. I mean, this is my most consistent motion is motioning across this receiver. Uh, this looks like a zero though. So I'm going to go ahead and check and release that running back just to make sure that I have adequate pass pro. And you can see, I could throw that before he's even breaking. I mean, I was throwing that early and he's still getting wide open. I'll go to the replay there just to show when I got rid of that ball, because there was some pressure coming in. Go ahead and I'll watch from the, the quarterback side, but you can see I'm already winding up. He, he does he look open? You know what I mean? He's like he's he's covered step for step, but by the time the ball gets there, he's just wide open. I mean that's just how this route is. It's unstoppable. So I'm gonna do it one more time. Like I said, I don't really know what defense I'm looking at. Cover three probably gives us the most issue, as you're gonna be able to. If this is a cover three, he might be able to cut that off. But, uh, but no, I mean, he's just same thing. I don't know what that was. It looked like maybe a cover four quarters or something like that. But this route here is going to have success against just about anything. If it's cover three, though, you're going to want to run from a hash to the short side of the field because from this look, although I can, if I put this guy on a fade, it might help pull that cover three. I mean, this is not a cover three, but I'm just saying it might help pull that cover three guy away a little more as I as I kind of ran into the, uh, the coverage uh, safety or cornerback there. But if it's cover three, this will only work from a hash mark to the short side of the field. I don't know if I'm going to get that look or not. But I'm going to do this one more time. Like I said, I have no idea what defense it is. It doesn't really matter. As we get what looks like another cover four, I'm not really sure. But it doesn't matter. Like I said, it's wide open every single time. Very good route. One of the best routes in this formation. Now, there is another play that beats just about every single defense in this in the game and that's the double outs which is another play where it really only has one natural defense that stops it and that's going to be cover two zones so we're going to go ahead we're going to pick random again but if it's a cover two zone i'm going to tell you right now it's not going to stop it this is another play i'm going to want to run this from a hash mark to the i mean i really want to run from a hash mark to the open side of the field but based off of the fact that i can throw to either one of these guys it's really going to be best to have them both in play as you can see if i throw it in the break that's 10 yards easy every single time and it doesn't matter which receiver i throw it to as you can see right here if i throw it in that break he has it you know what i mean that's a cover three you can tell the cornerback wasn't even worried about the receiver he drops back cover threes cover fours the the cornerback's going to get open underneath it cover one cover zero Zero. This looks like it might be uh, that looks like another cover three because he's more worried about the deep zone uh, Cover one cover two cover two ban um, Like I said cover two zone is the only thing that gives it problems and that's gonna be you know You'll be able to tell that right away because you'll have a five yard um, You know the cornerbacks will be five yard off the line I'm waiting to see that because the second I see that I'll know that I'll have to create something else But you can just steal this all game and your opponent's gonna have to worry about that Which is really why I keep this in my back pocket anytime I need to play I basically just keep this in my back pocket. This looks like it might be a cover two or maybe an off cover two, like that, like a, a, a split coverage, because it looked like a coverage cornerback on the left side. The one trick that I will do 
is if I'm running this to a hash mark to the open side of the field, I know that the B route's not really in play. So in this scenario, I'll just put the B route on a drag. As you can see, this actually looks like we have our first cover too. I'll go ahead and I'll throw it. As you'll see, this, this guy plays it better than anything else. You know what I mean? Even though I didn't really stop it, uh, I still bodied him. I still, I still cut him off at the angle. And then last but not least, we have probably the best pass play in the entire formation with the PA tight end leak. This is one play touchdown against everything. So we're going to start off with cover two, Tampa two. For Tampa 2, I mean, there's a couple things you can do. Since I'm on a hash mark already, if I streak the B route, we should get uh, the A route here and the, the RB route an opportunity right up that seam. I mean, I could probably run that to the open side of the field and it wouldn't really matter. It'd probably help out. So, you know, with this setup, like I said, the, the fullback there will pull the, the cover two defender down. And if you have a really fast tight end, this could be a one play touchdown in itself, although he was kind of stiff and rigid. If I had uh, Albert Aqua Boonham there, he probably would have a better shot. But there's a better one play touchdown anyway, simply by putting this guy on a wheel route and motioning him in the other direction. That's all I got to do, and that's going to create enough space for this X route right up the middle. As you can see, the safety is giving chase, but that wheel route is going to be uh, the most important thing. Now, that exact same setup also works for cover two man. So let's go and let's pick that. Same setup. You don't necessarily always have to motion this guy, but since I'm on a hash mark, I do. If, I, if, if you noticed, he actually runs the wrong direction from this area. So I have to motion him out to get him in the right area. But if you're closer to the other side, you won't even have to make that motion. But either way, same thing. We're just going to get this, uh, you know, this guy here splitting the safeties. And it's another very easy one play touchdown. And it's based off the fact that the receiver is starting inside the cornerback since he has inside leverage on his coverage corner it's not going to matter the b route's a very good man beating route too which i'll get into a little bit more later but you can see how that route just gets wide open and i might be able to get a one play touchdown with this if i can get a little bit more speed at this spot so two very good routes when it comes to man cover two next up we have we'll do cover zero because this is one of the easier ones so there's a couple different ways to beat cover zero with this play one of them is just as is the b route here is a very good play uh, once he crosses the field but the one adjustment i'm gonna have to make is putting the uh the running back on a check and release so he can pick up any any extra um rushers while also occupying that safety i like doing the wheel route adjustment which is going to be something that i do quite a bit on just about every one of my plays with the one play touchdown so i could always do that as well as you can see that does get a big play especially with speed advantage you can put a running back at this spot and have the same success as that is going to be successful like i said the b route here really just gets going and the wheel route actually is kind of pulling coverage into that area so the wheel route actually hurts that route but it's something that you can do so like i said i'll do it one more time this this b route is just dirty though as you can see he's wide open and that happens because the uh the, the tight end a lot of times sets a pick on this actual um, receiver and i'll go to the replay to show what that looks like as um as you can see here, it's just the way that these are designed. He did, they just cross each other up. And at this point, look how far wide open this guy is. He's got like 10 yards of separation, which makes for a very easy catch and run one play touchdown. So knowing that, I could always just, you know, put the X route on a zig or just shorten it in some way. It really doesn't matter. And you're going to see how uh, the B route here is just so much, you know, so much cleaner now. I mean, I could just get a very easy one play touchdown because there's nobody out here um, left over covering anybody else. So that's also a very good setup. But if you don't want to cross the center of the field where the user is most likely going to be, you can motion them across and have a lot of success. As I'm going to, you're going to see how this route here just gets wide open to the edge. And it's another very easy, uh, you know, quick hitter where I could easily just do the same thing where by shortening that X route to get this route open. As you can see, he's getting like 10 yards of separation every single time. I mean, this is as easy as it gets. You see right here, I mean, the second he breaks, he's got five yards of separation. I can throw that right away. And we're up the field for an easy one-play touchdown once again. So like I said, knowing that, let's go and let's slant the X route just to just to get anybody out of the out of that area. And you can see once again, boom, catch and run, catch that with a, a nice rack catch, and we're gone. I mean, this is just there's so many different easy ways to beat cover zero with this scheme, including just putting the uh, running back on a check and release. And now you're gonna see how the X route here can be gone as he just basically gets open right out of the middle although i got that stupid jumping catching animation which messed that up but post routes especially with inside release like he has are going to get open a lot next up we'll do cover one man we'll do cover one hole now this is another play where i can do the motion with smith he's going to get open the same way and the post route should pull that safety to the point where I mean, I could just throw that up the field all day, although I threw that kind of late because I didn't I didn't check and release. The check and release uh, does more than just pass block 
as it also speeds up my ability to deliver this ball. So if I'm doing it this way, probably want to put the A around the street because I want to pull that safety out of the way as much as possible so that I can get this um, as he finally actually did a pretty good job there. That's the first time he broke on that. So cover one man might not be as consistent as cover zero, but it's still very consistent. So we'll do this one more time. Like I said, I don't really have a lot of doubts that this route is going to be consistently open. As you can see here, once again, it's just a little bit tighter. Cover one man's got a little bit more consistent uh, coverage based on the fact that there's a deep safety helping. There is, to me, the best way to do it, though, is just the wheel route. The wheel route is one of the better routes when it comes to man. Like I said, I have a pretty fast tight end there. Just got to get it outside, and I can typically catch and run that from the safety. That's a very uh, good option. The wheel route's very explosive against man coverages. But you could also motion this guy across, put him on a fade, and now the post route's going to be the play, as I'll still have my wheel route if it's not there, but you'll see how that post route will pull this guy across, giving me an opportunity for a one-play touchdown as we as we took the, the tackle animation into the end zone there. So a lot of one-play touchdowns, once again, all of it coming from the exact same play. Next up, we got cover three, another defense that has a lot of different setups. So let's go and let's find ourselves... A cover three somewhere here there we go. go go we'll go cover three sky for cover three there's a lot of different setups but i find the best one is to run from a hash mark to the to the short side of the field motion out the tight end which is the only time that i do this and put the uh the, the fullback on a wheel route once again and that tight end on a comeback route will hold the cornerback better than anything else as you can see we have a we have a seam right there we're going to attack that seam every single time it's going to be the same seam but there's multiple setups I find doing that too much as a giveaway because it's the only time that I did that. So to me, it's better to do it this way by motioning out the um, the fullback and putting him on a wheel. Once again, from a hash mark to the short side of the field, and you still have that throwing lane. You just have to time it a little bit better as it requires more timing. Now, there is one more setup. I don't find it's the most consistent, but if you motion this guy across and uh, put the, uh, the A route on a streak, now you're going to have an opportunity where the RB route, a lot of times, it requires a little, holding the ball a little bit more, but the RB route here gets going a lot as well. As you can see, the cornerback eventually kind of just bails. This is not something that he always does, but if you watch this cornerback here, from time to time, he's going to uh, take his eyes off of that deep zone and try to drop down you can see he's he's kind of he's kind of chopping his feet and he's hesitating to drop on that short route he eventually bails for it when he does that when you see him being indecisive like that you can throw to this rb route and he's very easily gone for an instant one play touchdown because this guy's already lost all his acceleration and the wheel route hasn't so you can see i've loaded that ball the second i see him drop down on that corner route we have another easy one play touchdown because this particular setup is not the most consistent and it also takes the longest but sometimes you need a second setup for a one play touchdown against cover three because your opponent might be watching the first so there you can see he's, he, he basically chops his feet drops down get a very easy one play touchdown the other direction to the fullback like i said it's pretty consistent you just have to watch the cornerback and make sure that he actually bites so last two defenses are cover four we'll start off with cover four match this one's probably one of the easiest cover four match all you gotta do run from a hash Motion this guy, put him on a wheel. That's it. Now, there's a lot of good routes here, but the X route is already gone. As you can see, the, the cornerback and the safety switch, and that's really what makes this play successful. I'll go to the replay to show you what to watch for one more time. This only works from the hash mark, but basically that cornerback thinks it's not his responsibility, but he switches right there. Once the safety starts rotating out to the tight end, he's just got inside leverage and it's already too late. As I could have probably threw that right away as he's already gone for a one-play touchdown. Now you can also do the same setup of cover three as I motion this guy across, put the uh, the running back on a wheel, although I don't have to put the A route on a streak because that's actually going to be counterintuitive. This is going to get that X route going once again. Uh, and the wheel route's probably going to be going as well, if I'm being honest. So I'm going to do that again. Only this time I'm going to attack the wheel route because if I can get a one-on-one -on -one with that wheel route, it's going to be the exact same way. Uh, this is basically a man coverage as he didn't even, he, nobody even covered him that time, which can happen from time to time as well uh, as we didn't get a man match from the linebacker. I don't think that you can can uh, expect that though. So we'll go and we'll do that one more time because I do expect, you know, somebody being coverage. And all I really have to do, yeah, nobody's even, yeah, nobody's even man matching at this point. So yeah, so we got a really broken play uh, in multiple ways, as you know, cover four can be glitched easily if you know how to do it. And then last but not least, we have cover four regular, cover four drop contain. Pretty much going to be the same setup, run from a hash to the short side of the field. And but now I'm going to put the uh, the A and the B route on curls to try to hold those um, safeties and cornerbacks down. Uh, but motioning out that uh, fullback one more time. 
and you can see how you know you can get right over the top it just it just takes a pretty good throw to split those two safeties as i'm both bullet and pass leading up between the two safeties so that's that's the video if you guys want to see more breakdowns like this more full uh practice mode style breakdowns uh which anytime i have a new offense i want to do because i want to have uh these breakdowns linked in the description of the gameplays as well as have gameplay links in the description of these videos so if you want to see this happening against live opponents you can always check that out which i will have in the description so make sure to be a subscriber hit the like button let me know in the comment section other than that thanks for watching man my shit out need more help or just want to show your support then head over to my patreon and join my team where you can get exclusive content like ebooks and bonus plays as well as early access to my vids and more link in the description below